Hi everyone, my name is Benjamin Nyland. I'm an Office 365 MVP and we're here at ShareGate. Today, I want to talk to you about groups, but we've talked about groups for Office 365 before, what it is, what you get with it. In this video, we're going to look at how can you work with it. Let's look at this. All right, so how do you work with groups? And that's the question that I keep hearing because a lot of people are getting confused right? Groups for Office 365. No, that's taking over my Yammer. No, that's taking over team sites. And you can be further from the truth. Groups is something else altogether and what it is, and we're going to be looking at it here on my board behind me, is really more of a magnet. Groups isn't something that you start downloading and installing and using. It's more something that looks at what you already have, things like Yammer, things like emails, things like SharePoint sites, and brings them together in a notion of group, right? Takes a little bit of pieces that you already have and put those little pieces together and allows a team to work together. But it doesn't have to start for in the same way for everyone. So let me recap quickly about groups for Office 365 and then we'll go from there. So first, you've got groups for Office 365, right? And that isn't, again, it's not a new product. It's not something you go like Word or SharePoint. It's more a notion. They call it a fabric at Microsoft, something that pulls everything together, really. So with groups for Office 365, you're going to get things like conversations. You're going to get in these conversations, it's really emails, right? It takes the piece of Outlook emails and it allows every member of a group to have conversation by email. The advantage here is that they can also receive email from the outside. So this type of communication uh, brings the email part of your outlook and allows everyone that is in the same group or team to have these type of conversations, right? So far so good? Awesome. Then you have a notebook. So every time we create a group, you also get, as, as well as you get your conversation, you get a notebook, which is essentially a OneNote file that allows you to put some thoughts together. So let me give you an example. Right here at ShareGate, I work often by publishing blogs, right? So we have a group of people, a team, if you will, that helps me in publishing these blog posts. We have people that are there for design. We have their people for many different things. So we'll have some conversations by email, but they are open email. So if tomorrow a new person joins the team to help us publish new blog posts, we'll be able to see all the previous emails and participate in future emails. They're always open. And that's the very big difference in people working with email right now because if I send an email to my friend here, Mathieu, who's looking at the camera lens, making sure everything's okay, but if I'm sending him an email, he's the only person that knows about this email and we're chatting back and forth. No one else can benefit from there. In a group emails, even tomorrow if I have a new member joining in, we're good to go. Now, if I continue with that example and how we work with, let's say, blog publishing, I'll then have a notebook. There, it's a OneNote. So getting thoughts, you can clip something from the web when you get ideas. So when I'm browsing the internet and I think something could be good to talk about in a future blog post that I would like to publish, well, I'll grab it and put it in my notebook. I also put some thoughts down. So I'll put different categories of blogs and different articles that I can publish there. That's going to be another idea. So all of these ideas on what I could talk about in the upcoming weeks or months as topics, I'll put them in the OneNote notebook. So once again, everyone can put in some thoughts within the team in the same place, right? And that is our group, right? There is no something that we download. It's just a way that we work together. Next thing, I'll go over here. Actually, I'll go back right here. Typical French thing. We get a calendar, right? And that is one of the biggest pieces. The calendar is an Outlook calendar. It takes the Outlook calendar, but it gives it to the group. So the blog group, the blog team here at ShareGate has conversations between the members. If we're dealing with somebody from the press or from outside of the organization, we can give them an email so they can send and we can participate with that person as part of open emails. We have a notebook where we share thoughts on what could the next topics be. And we also get a calendar, which is an Outlook calendar, but it belongs to the group itself. It doesn't belong to a particular person. 
So when that person leaves, the calendar doesn't leave with that person. So there we have our calendar of blogs. When is something going to be published? What date? Uh, who's in charge? What are some of the ideas? And I can subscribe to that calendar so that I see it on my personal calendar as well. Or I can just overlay and use the regular Outlook overlay. The benefit for me as an individual user, I stay in Outlook. I have email conversations, quickly shift to a notebook, and I already have my calendar available to me. So this is another great piece, and I absolutely love this. In fact, another way to work with it is vacation request, right? You create a group for vacation request, and you could just be using the cal calendar piece. And that's the key takeaway from this video, is you have to understand, it's not because you use groups for Office 365 that you're gonna have to use every single piece that we have here with files and Yammer and notebooks. You could just be using Calendar because the reality is teams evolve and need different things in the future. So taking the example where I create a group for a vacation request here at ShareGate, which we have actually, and we have a calendar, right? And because it's a group, it has its own email address and the calendar itself as well. So whenever somebody needs to request a new vacation, they just invite the group. Somebody goes through and approves it, of course. Now, later on, we may decide that, you know what? We'd like to add conversations to this and start provisioning the conversation piece of the group. And as that evolves, perhaps we'll turn to files and submitting an actual proposition or a submission for request, or if that's even a word, submit, there we go, a vacation request form. And that will go as part of the files. Microsoft has announced that with groups, over time, you'll be able to start with one piece and provision the rest later. So you may start with just the calendar, just to be able to organize things for your team, whether it's a project, whether it's a social activity, that you're organizing a barbecue or anything at the office that involves more than a person, you could start with just one of these things and slowly provision the rest, such as files. And that's the next piece of groups. What happens with this is that it actually starts leveraging SharePoint, where before we were leveraging Exchange or Outlook, if you're familiar with that. Here, every time we create a group, we get a hidden SharePoint site collection. And in there, we get a document library. But for end users that are just using the groups to work with, they'll get it as OneDrive. But it's actually a SharePoint document library. So you get all the benefits of SharePoint, of course. So I know it's confusing, right? How do we work? The flow is simple. Depending on your team, depending on the group of people, whether it's one sometimes, or two, or three, or 10, or 50, you start using what you need. Now, it could be just that you need to put files together somewhere, or it could just be that you need a calendar, or that you're working in CRM even, or you just need a place to put thoughts and grab notes. And as the team grows, and as the needs for that project evolve, you'll be able to start leveraging the other pieces, and that's the benefit of groups, is that you don't have to worry about the technology anymore. You just grab what you need when you need it, but it's all tied in together. So when you go look at your group's activity, or you look at your group's profile in Office 365, you'll see all of these merge together. So whether it's an email, a Yammer conversation, or a file in OneDrive or SharePoint document library, you'll see it as one group activity. And that is the difference. Is it going to take over Yammer? Of course not, right? Groups isn't anything in particular. It isn't something. What it is, is actually bringing, if you start with Yammer, if your organization is already ready with Yammer, and you've been rolling out Yammer for a year now, you don't have to worry about groups. The Yammer groups that you've created Eventually, you'll be able to say, well, you know what? That Yammer group that we've created for marketing, for sales, for engineering, for a particular project, maybe you'll want to evolve. Maybe tomorrow what they need on top of those Yammer conversations and links and praises, maybe that group needs files. And that's 
what Office 365 groups or groups for Office 365 are. It's the ability to consume the different pieces that are already available by bringing them down together or in the same, or a fabric that pulls everything really together. So take a look at that. Look at the flow of working. You could be starting with one and then provisioning the others. It's not about taking over anything really, but just bringing everything together. I hope that makes sense and have an awesome day.